Hello everybody, this is Warlord. Today we're going to take a look at using AI generated images in iClone. We'll take a look at how to cut them out in a tool like Photoshop, and then we'll take a look at how to use them in iClone. So, let's get started. In Photoshop, let's go ahead and select subject, and fine tune that with your marquee keys, plus or minus. Here I'm going to delete a little bit that was on that planet, then I'm going to Delete it, add a new layer, and paste it in place. Not just regular paste, but paste in place. Now what I'm going to do is I want to cut that moon out. So I'm going to go ahead and just put some guides up. This just makes it easier for me to run in there and grab that, particularly if you don't work with your, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, your elliptical marquee very often. This will just help you go in. And you can see here, it'll snap to those guides. It doesn't have to be perfect for this, and you'll see why as we go on. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to delete it, and then we're going to create a new layer, and we're going to paste it on that layer. Now, let's use our rectangular marquee and select both of these cutouts. And we're going to use the generative fill without doing anything else and let it fill in what we cut out. Not very good there. That one's not bad. That one's not bad. But I think I'll stick with this one right here. Now we need to go ahead and move that layer down and then merge those two layers. I'm using Merge Visible. With our marquee tool, let's select our foreground and we'll cut it out. Add a new layer, paste it in place. Now I want to see if I can select mountain. So let's go back and try select subject first. See how that works and it's not quite going to do what we want, so let's go select the sky. There we go. Now we can do the same thing. Cut the sky out, add a new layer, and paste it in place. And you might want to move that sky all the way down to the bottom. Now with this here, we're going to clean it up just a little. No use messing with that rough edge. This is our background. You can go ahead and regenerate it if you want. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, scale it down. And now you can see we have all of our elements. Let's go ahead and select all our layers. Go over to File, Export, Export Layers to Files. And then just go ahead and run that. And now it will go ahead and export each of those into an individual file. Now this could take a while, depending on, of course, how many layers, how fast your computer is. But once it's done, those are all now exported out without having to do it individually. And ready to go into iClone. I right click on the image layers that we just created, drag them into the workspace as a plane, and do this for each image. Now at this point it doesn't matter where you drag them in, just get them into the workspace so we can work on them. Select them all, reset to zero, and scale to 600. And now as you can see we really need to know which one's which so we can separate them. So once again I'm just going to go in and rename them and I'm not going to make you watch all of that. So I'll speed it up here. And then I'll grab the layer like the background and I'll push it back. 
Then I'm going to come up to the terrain or the foreground and move it forward. I want the base to be next or right on top of that foreground. All I'm doing here is creating separation, just like you would in Cartoon Animator if you use that uh, product. It's just not quite built in like it is in Cartoon Animator. And you can also make other adjustments. But this is not going to be our final camera angle. We're just separating the layers, getting some separation in between them. And now I'm going to start lining it up. I'm going to get to where most of the layers fill it, fill the screen. And one good thing about layers is like with the background, we can just go and select it. And we can just scale it up to where it'll finish filling up our screen. You can see here again with layers, we can move the moon to anywhere we want to put it. And we can come in here and I'm going to blend it in just a little more. Just so it looks like it's a, it's a pasty, so it looks like it's a little further out. Now I've saved this as my camera angle. Don't move that camera once you save it. Go up to your preview camera or make another camera. And then let's take a look at what we've got. And we can make a little adjustment here. Need a little more separation here. And then we'll go back and see what that's done. Yeah, you can see the mountains are up. Not quite in the view like we want, so I'm going to bring it back down. And now I'm going to go ahead and scale those mountains up a little. Another good thing about having layers. Scale that base down just a little bit. And that's looking like a pretty good shot. Now I'm going to drag in an actor group I created earlier of stormtroopers. Of course, they're going to be way too large, but being as they're an actor group, we can just scale them down. Kind of moving them into play. Going to go reset the pivot. And we'll just scale them down. Now you notice we have a lot of shadows there. These are all image planes. There's nothing flat to catch a flat shadow. So really all of these are bogus shadows. And you can probably go in and just turn off the uh, part where they receive these shadows. But in this case, I'm going to get it situated kind of like I want it scale-wise and where I want it position-wise. And then I'm going to come into the scene and I'm going to go ahead and grab the shadow catcher and I'm going to drag it up and it's going to give us a flat shadow. It might not be the perfect shadow we want, but if you want a shadow, it does give you one to stick things together. At this stage, we haven't added any visual effects and everything's pretty bright. But one thing you can do since they're image layers is go back to something that some of you that follow my toots know I use quite a bit, and that is just a colored image layer over the top, and we just reduce the opacity, and it just kind of takes the sharp edge off if that bothers you. And of course, you would use whatever color you want or a color that matches the scene. In this case, I'm kind of cooling it down a little. This is an earlier test that I finished out by adding a few props and some popcorn FX. Makes for a pretty decent establishing or filler shot. I hope this helps.